I think it's been a while since I've made a video on arrays and for loops as well as enumerated arrays, so let's go ahead and learn about that. Okay, so what's an array? Uh, an array is an ordered collection of things. So here we go. We've got an ordered collection of strings up here. We've got a list of industrial bands here. If you're into industrial music, you might recognize these names, but essentially it's a collection of strings separated by commas and inside of these square brackets. That's how you know it's an array. If you're ever curious, you can always hold down the option key until your cursor turns into a question mark and click on it. And then it'll say uh, collection of strings. So it's an array of strings. And uh, array is ordered. So these are in order. First, skinny puppy. Second, frontline assembly. Then front 242, Funker vote, Hosiko. So when you're counting, inside of an array, programmers like to start at zero. So this one is in the zero position, this one's in the one position, this one's in the two position. So just uh, remember that counting starts at zero inside of arrays. So when you're trying to figure out, hey, what's at the first position, it's not the number one position, it's the zero position. All right, so how do we create a for loop? Well, first of all, what's a for loop? A for loop is a way to kind of loop through the array or dictionary or a collection of things. So we're going to loop through, in this case, the uh, array industrial bands. So how do you do that? You First you type 4. And by the way, this is in Swift, not in Swift UI. Uh, Swift UI, you can use for loops, but if you're creating views in Swift UI, then you'll want to look up for each. That's a different way to go through um, and create views. It's a different thing. But we're just doing Swift here. So for and and here's where you come up with a word. So I'm going to say for each band and then you use the word in. So for each band in industrial bands. And then you use the curly braces here. So it's going to go through for each band in industrial bands and then we'll do something like we'll print each band. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to run this and see what happens. There we go. So for each band in industrial bands, print each band. So it's printing skinny puppy, front line, blah, 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 right? Cool. When it's going through each of these bands, it's identifying these as strings, right? If they were something else like puppies or dogs or, I don't know, uh, players or whatever structure you have, you would have access to all the things that, you know, you can do with those um, players or whatever. So if it's a cat, you could have access to the cat's name, the cat's uh, fur color, things like that using dot notation if you've created a structure. And it's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but you can do something like uh, uppercase, I think, is a string thing. So it knows it's a string, so you have access to all the subscripts for string. So that's just a little extra. Um, okay, so I want to, for instance, let's, let's say I just want to print out what's at the zero position print uh, and then I'm going to go to all the industrial bands again and then I'm going to use the square brackets and type zero in there now what that's saying is yeah I want to take this industrial bands and print out whatever's at the zero position which happens to be skinny puppy see now arrays uh, we don't have to get too deep into arrays but arrays you can also do things like uh, industrial bands dot append so you can append, that means add at the end uh, something new. So let's add another industrial band in there. Uh, let's see, who am I missing? Let's put in project pitchfork. Okay, let's see if it's happy with that. Oh, it's giving me a hard time because, why? Because I said let up here. So if you, if you define uh, array using the let, property. That means it's not mutable. You can't change it. So you got to define it with a variable property, which means that now we can add things to it. So you can append in arrays. You can also insert and move and all kinds of things. You remove something from one position, add it to another position. There's all kinds of uh, ways to do stuff like that. So industrial bands, you know, dot remove all, remove it this, insert here, insert there. So insert new element, let's say insert, um, the robbing gristle. I think that's how you spell it. And we'll insert that at the zero position. So now when we for loop through this, let's see what happens. It's going to first loop through each one. Boom, 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 boom. 
and then it's going to print out the one at the zero position here at the bottom because I told it to do so. Okay, so what if we also want to know like what position everything's at? To figure out what position everything's in, there's a different way to for loop. It's very similar to this. We're going to do this. We'll copy and paste it down here, and then we're going to do dot enumerated. And what that's going to do is it's going to associate the index with each of these um, items. But where's it going? So we have to create like a different. So you type this out a little bit different. Instead of like that, you put a little parentheses in here, and then you want to throw the index before that. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be called index. It can be called whatever you want. So it can be called i or whatever. But I'm going to type index here just so it makes more sense to me. I don't know why that turned purple. That's weird. But let's go ahead and print each band. Actually, let's make a fancier print. So print each band is, and then we'll do this. And it's at what position? Something like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and comment out this one and this one. Uh, all right, we go ahead and hit play here and see what happens. Each band is, and then da da da. So one, zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to six. So this corresponds to its index number, and this corresponds to its actual name or what it is. In this case, it's a string. So it's just, we're able to just print that out pretty easily. So if we make this I, let's see, I'm going to make this I. Try again. See, I don't know why it's flagging index as a purple thing. Probably because it's index is usually used inside of the coding language. So I, it doesn't know what that is, but you see it works the same way. You can call it whatever. And you don't have to call this uh, each band. I like to do that because it makes sense in my brain for each band in industrial bands, but you can also call it like for band or whatever. Same thing. And the common convention actually usually is um, a lot of people will do this. So they'll take the same word, but they'll just remove the S. So it'll be like for industrial band in industrial bands, you know. But what I find is it's sometimes hard to, it looks like the same word, you know, so it's hard to differentiate these two. So that's why I like to do each band. And I'm going to even refactor this a little bit more. So it just says band is at blank position. Why? I don't know. Just works better in my brain. Throbbing gristle is at zero position. Skinny puppy is at one position. And if we were to move things around, um, like for instance, if we put throbbing gristle at the five position, let's see what happens. Okay, so now it's down here and skinny puppies at the zero position. Now what happens if we put this at the seven position or eight position? Uh, I think it'll crash. Crash, right? Because there isn't anything in the, let's see, one, two, or zero, one, two, three, four. It only goes up to four at this point and then five here. And we're throwing this at eight, but it's like, well, what's, what's at six? What's at seven? What's it? So you can't throw it outside of the range there. So this is a common reason that apps crash is when you're trying to identify something in an array that doesn't exist there. So it's okay with throwing it at the six position because there's five and now we're throwing something in six. But if we throw it in the seven position and there's no six position, then we're in trouble, right? So if we were to do something like this, so we throw uh, something in the six, then something in the seven, it'd be okay with that. So we did something like this, K M F D M at six position, throbbing gristle at seven, then it should be okay with that because we're not skipping anything. So you just have to be careful when you're adding things to an array that you are not skipping any numbers. Um, and the easy way to do that is just to append. And append will just throw it at the end of the array, regardless of the um, regardless of the size, it'll just go to the end and throw a new one on. You can also insert things at zero position because zero position is the first one and it'll always just kind of slide things down the down the row. And um, yeah, so hopefully this helps you kind of see how a for loop works and a little bit more about arrays and inserting and appending. And uh, you can also remove things from the array, which I didn't show, but you just experiment with that. 
And if you have any questions, then send me a message. But uh, hopefully you're doing well out there. Take care.